What do you get when you cross first person shooting with rhythm based combat? Well, according to a bunch of articles I've read, you get a cross between Doom and Guitar Hero which might be one of the most broad generalizations I've ever seen since I heard someone on the internet call Carrot Top a comedian. What I'm talking about here is a game called BPN, short for Bullets Per Minute, developed by Or Interactive, which is described as a rhythm roguelike FPS where you shoot, jump and dodge to the epic beat of a rock soundtrack. Comparing this to Doom though, simply because it's a first person shooter is kind of like calling Grand Theft Auto a racing sim, simply because you can drive cars. And comparing the music in this to the more challenging levels in something like Guitar Hero is like comparing someone playing chopsticks on the piano to Fly to the Bumblebee. I mean look, I'm all for broad generalizations, believe me. It's an often easy way to quickly communicate what a game resembles on face value for a quick overview but I'd like to think that my generalizations are at least a bit more specific. Anyway, my point is that despite what you might have heard about this game, it's nothing like Doom. Outside of its perspective and control scheme and, I don't know, the fact that you shoot things. It's probably no secret at this point, but I'm a guy who's heavily into first person shooters. Something I've also never mentioned, because I'm not pretentious, is that I also have a musical background. I played piano and trumpet for over 10 years and I even trained for a bit at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music when I was in high school. Some of my most played games on Steam are these kind of difficult punishing roguelikes. Risk of Rain 1 and 2, Spelunky, Dead Cells and recently Gunfire Reborn. On top of that, BPM is a game about descending into hell as a goddamn Valkyrie, with heavy metal music as your backing track. I mean, this game should be an easy sell for me. But it's a game that I found has a really good starting stride, but never really feels like it picks the pace up and runs with it. <laughs> right, so the gunplay in this thing is all about shooting your guns to the beat of the music. You're forced to fire and reload weapons every full or half beat depending on the weapon and this also carries across into some of the movement controls like dashing and double jumping. Instead of a crosshair, you've got this animated cursor that shows you the timing for each beat, kind of like a horizontal version of the user interface in Dance Dance Revolution. But if you're able to keep rhythm naturally, you probably won't even need this thing at all and you'll be able to just time it in your head. You'll also have to factor in weapon reloads to the beat as well. Some weapons can only be reloaded every beat, others on a half beat, and then weapons like revolvers need every round manually inserted too. Kinda of gets confusing with weapons like the shotgun, which works off two beats instead of one. One to fire the weapon, then one to pump another shell in. Makes sense? And I can't think of any other first person shooting game that's ever done this before, so yeah, it kinda of wins points for being unique. The first issue I have though, is that I really do think that some of the music, it ain't all that great. The song for the first level in the game, which you are going to hear a whole lot, is just so unenjoyable to listen to. With this whining guitar riff and a slow, plodding melody that it just ends up getting ingrained inside your head in the worst possible way. I think the music for the first level in a video game should be one of the best on that game's soundtrack, especially in a game like this where replayability is so high. But more than that though, the music just kind of never seems to escalate from that starting track. There's a few decent songs the further you get into the game, but nothing that really served to make the action more chaotic or intense, it just kind of went on in the background. You're not going to be ripping and tearing to the kind of music you'd hear in a game like Doom Eternal, let me put it that way. And it kind of follows into another issue I have here is how the music doesn't even really change all that much from level to level, aside from maybe just upping the tempo a tiny bit more. Every song just works off that same 4x4 time signature with no deviation. It's also a shame that there's no option here to add in your own custom tracks either, at least not as far as I could find. Adding in something like Dimmu Borgi or any other dope metal bands would have been awesome. Not to mention, it'd give you endless replayability, finishing the game to your own masturbatory playlist. If I had to describe the shooting in this thing, I'd say it's okay without being amazing. I think the biggest problem is that the weapons just don't feel impactful or fun to use. You get very little feedback when you're actually hitting something. Enemies will kind of slightly react when they take damage and that's about it. You don't really get the sense of a shotgun being more powerful than a pistol is for instance and the sound design doesn't even emphasize that you're doing more or less damage with the different weapon types. 
What I also dislike is that from the beginning of a run, your weapons are going to have absolutely atrocious range. You've got to be so close to enemies to even hit them, and then even then, the weapon spread is really wide at that point. You can increase stats like weapon range, damage, and accuracy by donating coins to these little shrines in some of the rooms where they happen to spawn. But then sometimes you can go almost entire levels without finding any of these, which kind of shows the flaws in the game's RNG. And I really feel like they almost tapped into how good this combat could have been. Let me explain. Right, so when you beat a boss, they kind of hover in the air for a few seconds, and then as you shoot them, you get these loud guitar hits. Each connecting shot plays another note in this sweet guitar riff. Check it out. And this right here is how I think the entire game should have played. Every single shot that connects with an enemy should have had some kind of musical sound effect. Not only would it let you know when you've hit something and create some excitement, but it would also tap more into the rhythm-based aspect of the shooting, which I mean, is kind of the whole point, isn't it? They could even get more creative with this. I mean, if you end up scoring a critical hit, that sound could be amplified. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. How about having different weapons sounding like different instruments? Well, I don't know, each time you get a kill, the screen filter could change from red to yellow to bright pink. Turn this thing into a full-blown LSD trip. I don't know, man, just something. As it is, the music and the rhythm limitations on shooting guns just kind of feels like that limitation. I never really felt like I was moving around and shooting with the music. It just kind of felt like an impediment on how I could play the game. I mean, look, I understood how it worked and I got the hang of it, but it just felt like it lacked excitement. The music just felt more like a backing track instead of it being a focus and this dynamic element to what I was doing. Gotta say too, I don't know what they were thinking with some of the enemy designs in this game either, but these just feel like the most generic enemies I've ever seen. This game is supposed to be drawing off Nordic mythology, right? And the level's got names like Asgard, Helheim, all these fictional worlds where deities and fantastic creatures reside, according to the literature anyway. And yet in the game, the enemies are comprised of mostly things like bats, scorpions, flies, and spiders. Yes, spiders. Never mind that shotgun, grab me a can of surface spray. Now, some of the boss designs are pretty damn cool, but the basic enemies are just so uninspired and run of the mill. And yeah, that's the message you want to see in your Nordic-inspired, heavily stylized music shooter, isn't it? Killed by a fast fly. Sounds like life in Western Australia. Schwacked. I don't know, man. Maybe games like Doom Eternal, Ultra Kill, and Gal Gun have kind of spoiled me. But I don't really find it all that fun shooting insects. I also recommend turning down the saturation filter too, which permeates throughout the entire game. Having this thing on is kind of like getting a lap dance while you're wearing a pair of welding goggles. Then on the other side of things, you've got the weapons, which I guess are modelled well, but they kind of make no sense to me given the setting. The shotgun looks like something out of a Halo game. The pistol looks like Deckard's gonna whip it out of his trench coat and start gunning down replicants. And the rocket launcher looks and fires like it's taken out of a Quake game. Oh yeah, and check out this relit animation for the revolver. I mean, I don't know, I guess it was just too hard to animate each bullet going in the chamber individually. At one point out of the couple dozen runs I played, I even got a chain gun that looked a bit like an off-brand version of Doom Eternal's chain gun. So, I don't know, maybe the journalists were actually right. Maybe this is like Doom meets Guitar Hero. And did I miss something? Or are there, like, no melee weapons in this game at all? At least none that I found when I was playing. Because, yeah, it's not like Valkyrie's ever used any of those weapons, is it? Two of the items you'll be collecting the most are keys and coins. Keys are used to unlock chests and also gain access to libraries where you can acquire new abilities. Abilities like shooting out fireballs or casting a huge wave across the entire room, damaging every enemy at once. And then coins are used on little shrines to upgrade one of your stats, along with being used at the blacksmith to buy weapons and items. But the RNG in this thing is often the most deadliest opponent, and the appearance of these shrines is so sporadic that sometimes you'll end up with dozens of coins because you've just got nothing to spend them on. I've gone entire runs without being able to get into the library either, and there's ultimate abilities in the game of which I found one in the eight or so hours I spent with this thing. You'll find armor pieces too, pieces for your torso, head, legs and arms, which also give buffs to your character. Like a helmet that causes each shot to become explosive, gloves that increase your movement speed to the point that it actually becomes a handicap, or a shield which causes double damage, but again, you can go half a run without finding any of these. 
During one playthrough, I'd gotten to the fifth stage and only found a single damage upgrade. I mean, at that point, just let me drop my dax, paint a bullseye on my butt cheeks to make it even simpler for the game to ram its fist up my ass. My current record is about 50 or so coins, where I just couldn't find a single thing to throw these at. And then to add insult to injury, the boss for one of those levels dropped another bunch of coins when he died. But then you just have those runs where you've outright broken the game and all semblance of challenge is just thrown out the window. The first time I finished the game on the so-called easy mode, only because hard mode is locked by default, I beat the final boss so quickly because I was just doing that much damage with my weapons that it was almost impossible to fail. And even before this I was killing the bosses with like half a dozen shots with a shotgun. I do want to say though that on a positive note, I do think the bosses are probably the best parts of the game. Only because visually they're the most unique and they have actual patterns to beat them, instead of just relying on constant circles strafing around a room. And then there's rooms where you need to square off against what's basically mini bosses, each again with their own respective strategies and attack patterns. These enemies often have powerful attacks you'll need to dodge at the right moment, indicated by a unique marker on your crosshair. And you know what? They're genuinely fun to play and they take skill to beat. If nothing else, it's a welcome alternative to just all of the rooms of slugs and spiders that spit projectiles at you. You want to know one of the most minor things that annoys me in this game? You don't? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. It's how the map screen doesn't show the layout of the room itself. You just get this generic square which doesn't even show anything. It just shows you which side of the room an exit is on, which can be kind of confusing when rooms are split across multiple levels. And annoyingly too, you can't enlarge the map to full screen to see the entire layout of the stage. I mean, full screen auto maps is the kind of thing we've had in gaming since the 90s. You can eventually unlock different Valkyries to play as, which have different starting weapons and basic stats, but these really don't make that much of a difference after playing for a couple of levels anyway. Once you start buying upgrades, getting new guns and equipping armor. And either way, you're just really playing the same 9 levels over and over. On a technical side of things, I had some pretty bad performance issues in some of the later levels too, where it became so choppy that it was really hard to just aim and shoot properly, and even basic movement became tricky. I do like too though how the game saves your progress at the beginning of each level, so if you do want to take a break you can, and you don't have to end your entire run, and this is also handy because the game crashed about half a dozen or so times for me. There is at least a fair bit of content here, even if it is just that same basic game mode replayed with different characters. You can do challenge runs too, like this one here called the Retro Run, because yeah, remember when first person shooters were so blurry and pixelated to the point that you couldn't even make out what you were looking at? Yeah, me neither. Now, I don't want to seem like I'm just shitting all over this game, but I think the reason I'm doing this is because I can really see the potential it had, and it just never builds or capitalizes upon its concept all that much. Just kind of like someone took that basic core idea and never developed it further than that. This will definitely appeal to some people though with its heavy metal themes and first person shooting, which has attracted so many Fairweather FPS fans lately, it's just fucking insane. And if you are really struggling with the beat based combat, well you can turn this off entirely or at least make it more forgiving. And you know what, I think the price is right considering what they're offering, and I am if nothing more a reprehensible indie shill, so ultimately I think indie shooter fans should give it a go. I just can't shake the feeling though that it could have been so much more.